function of digestive system is mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. In digestive system, we have two types of digestion, which include physical, and also I can say mechanical digestion, and also chemical digestion. I'll go through these two types of digestion when I explain in details the digestive system. This includes breaking down a large uh, particle of food into the small particles to be easy uh, digested using uh, enzymes and get uh, uh, to form a small particles. The other function of the digestive system also including propulsion. We know that in the digestive system, the food is mixing up and pushing down through the muscles that found in the tubes of the digestive system. And this mechanism, we call it peristalsis and segmentation. The digestive system organs also in a, uh, able to uh, secrete enzymes and hormones. These enzymes is very essential to get or to uh, accomplish the, uh, digest, the, the digestion of food and also including the secretion of hormones. Most important things or um, uh, could be absorbed when the food is going through this tube. In order to get the, to get the energy, we know that most uh, absorption can be happened in the small intestine, and uh, absorb. <coughs> Sorry. To the blood to get the energy and provided it to other to the tissue. What about the indigestive food or the waste? This could be defecation, you know, and eliminated through the last part of the digestive system, which is anus. So in general, or to summarize, the digestive system is a tube starts with the mouth and then esophagus, from esophagus the food will transfer to the stomach and then to the large intestine and then to the, uh, sorry, to the small intestine, then large intestine and we said that the indigestive food will be uh, removed or defecation through the anus. I finished the function of the digestive system. Now, uh, now I will explain the four layers of gastrointestinal tract. From inside, to outside of the tube of the gastrointestinal tract. We know that the gastrointestinal is like a tube and from inside to outside is composed of layers. These layers, I will go through each one in detail. The gastrointestinal tract contains four layers. The innermost layer is mucosa. Here is the mucosa. And underneath the mucosa, we have a submucosa. This one. The submucosa is followed by the muscularis peria. This is the red one. And finally, the outermost layer, which is adventitia. The structure of these layers varies. The thickness is various. Why? It's depending on these, their function. This layer varies in different regions of the digestive system. 
depending on the function. The four layers in more details, we will start with the mucosa. In histology, we have to focus on the tissue, which is linking each organ, because it could be different or various according its function. For example, it's linking epithelium, which is including glandular tissue. An underlying layer of loose connective tissue called lamina properia. Here is the first layer of mucosa. As I said, it's an epithelium, followed by lamina properia. What is the function of lamina, lamina, lamina properia? This layer provides vascular support for the epithelium and often contains mucosal glands. The product of digestion passes into these capillaries Lymphoid follicles and plasma cells are also often found here, where in lamina propria. Finally, the third layer of mucosa, it is mesicularis mucosa. Which is responsible for the movement of the mucosa. The mucosa is followed by a submucosa, which is consists of a loose connective tissue layer with a larger blood vessels, lymphatics, nerves, and can contain mucosa secretion glands. Secreting glands, sorry. Muscular superperia and adventitia. I will explain it in the this slide. From its name, muscular superperia, and they call it also externa, which is a smooth muscle layer. There are actually two layers. The inner layers is circular. However, the outer layer is longitudinal. The arrangement of the smooth muscle and like this, it's aid or responsible for the peristalsis, which is arithmetic waves of contraction. What is the function of this process to move food down through the gut? So the contraction of circular will reduce the tube, okay, in order to pushing the food down into the other part of the digestive system. What about adventitia layer? It is an outermost layer which is composed of loose connective tissue, which also contain blood vessels, lymphatic, and nerves, and they call it serosa. So its name is adventitia layer or serosa. In general, let's start with oral mucosa. We know that the digestive system is a start with the mouth and then go through each part of that digestive system. This diagram shows a cross section through the lip and teeth. And you can see some main features of the structure. This part of the lip, which is connected to the skin, and then starts with the lip, and then will transit, transit uh, into the mucosa of oral cavity. So the type of epithelium will be changed and here it is a transitional. Okay? And this one will be a gum or gingiva and this is the teeth. And here the teeth com consists of two parts. 
One is embedded in the bone and supported with gingiva, and the other part is a pear. We call it crown. Okay. All of the oral mucosa is made up of a thick stratified squamous epithelium. Oral mucosa, in general, the type of epithelium for leaning the oral cavity is stratified squamous epithelium. This layer is supported by a lamina properia. As I said in this slide, the epithelium is supported by lamina properia. The epithelium is thick here. Why? Because the epithelium leaning of the oral cavity is subjected to lots of wee and tear. In some parts of oral cavity, we, see, we can see that the mucosa is keratinized and in some parts of oral cavity is leaning with keratinized epithelium. What is the part of oral cavity is leaning with a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium? In mobile areas, which is a soft palate, and your side of the tongue, flow of the mouth, and mucosal surface of the cheek and lips. The type of epithelium is not keratinized. However, other areas in which including gums, hard palate, not soft palate, soft palate, not keratinized. However, hard palate, gums, and most of the upper surface of the tongue, the type of epithelium is keratinized. And I said before, why this variation? It's depending on its function. Underneath the oral mucosa, there is a tough collagenous submucosal layer. And also we can see a salivary glands, except where the oral mucosa lies over bone where the submucosa is thin. So the first accessory is salivary gland. And I'll go through it in the following slides. To summarize, sorry, to start with the oral cavity, we will go through the lip. The skin of the lips is stratified squamous epithelium. The core of striated muscle in the lip or labia makes this structure highly mobile. Why it is highly mobile? In order to perform a function regarding ingestion speech, and other forms of communication. You notice that the, the color of the lip is uh, tend to be red. Why? This one is explained in this point. The red vermilion zone of each lip is covered by a thin keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So, the epithelium here is thin. And this will be a transitional between the oral mucosa and skin. It is transitional from the oral mucosa and the skin, and it is different from the skin by lacking salivary glands and sweaty glands. But it is rich with sensory in and innervation and capillaries which is responsible for the pink, pink color of this region.
After lip, I will go through the first oral tissues, starting with tongue. This figure show you the tongue, which is divided into three parts. The first two thirds, the anterior two thirds, and the posterior third. These parts or uh, could be divided through the sulcus terminals. If you open your mouth in front of mirror, you can see this sulcus terminals. The tongue is a mass of inter uh, interesting skeletal muscle and also connective tissue with some mucosa and serous glands and pockets of adipose tissue which cover the oral mucosa. As I said before, the V line, shaped line, this one is a V. V, shaped line, shallow growth, the sulcus terminalis divides the tongue into an anterior, it is a two-third part, and posterior is one-third. The mucosa covering the upper surface of the tongue is thrown into numerous projunctions called lingual papillae. So, we can see lots of papillae covering the tongue here, which part in the two-thirds of the anterior tongue of the tongue. In posterior third of the tongue, there are no papillae, but there are lots of lymphoid follicles present. As I said before, that the first two thirds of the anterior tongue, we can find uh, papillaries. We have three types of papillae, fungiform, filiform, and circumvallate. The fungiform is named by fungiform because it is a mushroom-like. Filiform, it is a filium or thread-like. And the biggest one is a circumvallate. There is a, another type of palate, but it is unknown, uh, uncommon in human, which is foliate papillae. So we have to concentrate on the types which is found in the human. <clears throat> to summarize the function of the tongue, it's manipulate and mix mixes ingested materials during chewing with the saliva and forms the bolus. What is bolus? It is a granular mass of partially digested material. The tongue also per performs important functions in swelling. Now I finish the histology of the oral mucosa, and we will go through lip and also tongue. Let's go in detail to these papillae, which is found on the tongue. As I said before, we have a three type of papillae, which is common in a human. It is a fungiform and filiform. This figure showing the presence of both fungiform and filiform papillae. What is the difference between each one? The filiform, as I said, it is thread-like. Its papillae are the most common in human, keratinized, and its color look white. 
However, fungi form, its papillae are not keratinized or very, very uh, low keratinized, but are highly vesicularized and it's, they look red. Most fungiform papillae have taste bud. This is the differences between fungiform and filiform. Fungiform containing uh, taste bud. Okay, now you can recognize the differences between fungiform and filiform. If we go underneath the papillae, there are mucosa and serous glands, and also a pocket of adipose tissue, and a layer of skeletal muscle, and connective tissue. Why the tongue could be moved in different direction? <clears throat> because the arrangement of skeletal muscles is arranged in three different plans and this enabled the tongue to perform a number of complex movements. These two figures also showing the fungiform in the left, in your left hand, However, your right hand, you can see the filiform, which is a three-like. The third type of papillae is a circumvallate, which is the biggest one. Sorry. Okay, this figure showing the circumvallate papillae and also the most important labels here. We want to have a look on this section. What you can see, how or what uh, you can identify in this section. First of all is a circumvallate papillae and which containing a taste bud and the part which is next to the cleft. Here's this a space we calling it a cleft and also provided the tissue underneath is provided with the glands we call it von Ebner's gland. We will go through each one in details in the following. Okay. In this figure, we can notice that the papillae are very large. And these papillae have taste bud, as I said before, where these located in the middle, in the medial walls of the cleft. We also can recognize that these papillae are larger than the other two types of papillae. And we can see a glance, as I said before, we call it von Ebner's gland. This glance, or the type of this gland, is a serous gland, which open into the cleft. So, this gland open into the cleft in order to drain its secretion into the cleft. Taste bud. Taste buds contain epithelially derived taste receptor. 
in here the taste bud having a taste receptor cells that surround a small central cavity that opens into the surface as a tiny taste pool. Basal cells, <coughs> sorry, basal cell will renew both of the cells, two type of cell. Which one? Taste receptor cells and sustentacular cells. So, which is responsible for renew both cells? It is a basal cell. In this slide, we have you have to concentrate on the main characteristic of the circumvallate papillae, and what is the difference between this type of papillae from other type that we explained in the previous slide. As I said, the taste bud and the papillae, we can see the taste, which a container taste bud. The function of the papillae will help grip food and move it around while you chew. Taste buds have very sensitive microscopic hairs called microvilli. Those tiny hairs send messages through the brain about how something tastes. So you know if it is sweet, sour, or bitter. As I said in the previous slide, there is three types of cells which is gastatory cell as i said it in the previous slide and i call it a receptor cells and supportive cells both these type of cells is renewed by basal stem cells One of the most important part also of digestive system is the tonsils, which is a collection of lymphoid tissues facing into the aerodigestive tract. Now I would like to mention to the function of tonsils, it's re it is represent the immune system's first line of defense against ingested or inhaled region pathogen. A foreign pathogen, sorry. Tonsils produce T lymphocytes. <clears throat> okay. The other structure, which also found in the oral cavity, is a teeth. Small, calcified, hard, whitish structures that found in the mouth. These structures is responsible for the mechanical digestion, breaking down items of food by cutting and crushing them. As I said before, the digestion, including two types of digestive di digestion, mechanical and chemical. So, inside the oral cavity, what is responsible for the mechanical one is the teeth. In details, I will explain the teeth. The teeth can be divided into two main areas, the crown and the root. Most of the hard tissue in the teeth is dentin. What is dentin? It is a special calcified tissue. Okay, 
we know that each cells or every tissue is derived from other type of tissue. So the dentin is derived from mesenchyme. The dentin here in the root is covered by a layer of cementum, which is a calcified tissue derived from mesenchyme also. How tooth uh, is connected or cannot be removed easily from the ma from the bone because it is connected to the bone by the periodontal ligaments, which has a wide bundles of collagen fibers and is embedded in bony ridge called alveolar ridge. <coughs> Teeth is made up of three layers. If I want to go in details of the layers of the teeth, it's composed of three layers, enamel, dentin, and pulp cavity. The crown, as I said before, the tooth is divided into two main areas. The crown, which is the part which appears from the teeth, tooth, sorry. The crown is protected by layers of enamel. What is enamel is a very hard, highly mineralized tissue, which is derived from ectoderm. So what is the difference between dentin and enamel? By its de uh, derived, dentin derived from mesenchyme, however, enamel is derived from ectoderm. Cementum, dentin, and enamel. What is the difference of these three structure from bone? It differs from bone in that they are not vesicularized. Enamel are also doesn't have collagen as its main constituent. It's made up of crystals or prisms of calcium phosphate. You have to concentrate here or focus in here on this one. The center of tooth is made up of bulb cavity. What is the main function or what is the importance of bulb cavity? The bulb cavity that extends down through the roots as a root canal, this region contains the nerve and blood supply to the, teeth, to the tooth. So it's provided with the nerve and blood supply will enter through this region. Gums or gingiva is the name for the oral mucosa but in which tie in which part that covers the tooth the oral mucosa covers the tooth we call it gums and gingiva at the gingival cervix or sulcus the cells here and the epithelium of the gum adhere to the tooth enamel. Yeah. How this happened? It is adhered to the tooth enamel through a basement membrane. Here, gums gingiva, if bacteria calcify here and accumulated, they can disrupt the seal and the periodontal tissues can become infected and inflamed.
The structure of tooth, as I said before, dentin. The dentin is made by a dentiplast that lie on its inner border here, inner border. Production of dentin is limited to the palpal surface. About 90% of dentin is type 1 collagen and about 70% of weight, weight is hydroxy epitate. So dentin is made by odentoplast. What is odentoplast? It is a tall columnar secretory cells. Their secretory processes are embedded in the matrix, which is impregnant with parallel dentin tubules. Here we can see that the dentin is laid down and then calcified. Thus, there is a thin layer of a predentin, which is not calcified between the dentin and odentoplast. Here is okay. Enamel is made by a myeloblast. What is a myeloblast? Is a tall calumina ectodermally derived cells. As I said before, enamel is derived from ectoderm. It is produced before the teeth erupts. Each uh, amyloblast has an elongated tip called a Tom's process that secretes the organ organic matrix of an animal rod. 96% of tooth is mineralized. This figure will show you in details the structure of tooth. Okay, here is the dentin and predentin and odentoplast. Okay. In the oral cavity, there is lots of salivary gland, which is responsible for the secretion of saliva. The saliva is composed of water, amylase, and lysozyme. The percentage of water is 99%. So, the water is the highest content of the saliva. Amylase, first step of chemical digestion. So here we can understand and know that in the oral cavity, both type of digestion can be happened in the oral cavity, mechanical and chemical. Mechanical using teeth and chemical using enzymes that produced or secreted into the oral cavity. It also contains lysozyme. Lysozyme, which have an antimicrobial activity. The function of saliva, it's moist in food and form bowls and cleans oral cavity because it's composed of 99% of water. <laughs> Salivary gland in details. Salivary glands are made up 
of secretory acini. What do we mean of acini? It's a rounded secretory unit. This figure diagram, in this diagram, you can see that the these acinis, it's a rounded secretory unit and also consists of ducts. How many types of secretions? There are two types of secretions, serous and mucus. The acini can either be serous or mucus or a mixture of serous and mucus. And this diagram will show you the serous and a mixture of serous and mucus. What is a serous acinus? This type secretes proteins in an isotonic water fluid. However, mucus secretes mucine lubricant. In a mixed serous mucus acinus, the serous acinus formed a serous diminim around mucus acinus. Here, this one. And the mixture of serous and the mucus secretion. The secretory units merge into intercalated ducts. This one, a secretory unit, merge into intercalated duct. This one is lined by simple loocupoidal epithelium tissue. These are surrounded by myoepithelium epithelial cells. So the secretory units merge into intercalated duct and this duct is lined by simple loocupoidal epithelium which is supported by surrounded by myoepithelial cells. These ducts will continue on as straighted ducts will go to the straighted duct. These have a folded basal membrane. Why? To enable active transport of substances out of the duct. Okay. The straighted duct led into interlobular, which is an excretory duct lined with a tall columna epithelium. To summarize, the secretory merge into intercalated. This intercalated duct leaning by low cuboidal epithelium, as you can see here and then continue to straighted duct <coughs> sorry the straighted duct is uh, well uh, as i said it's uh, a folded basal membrane why it is a folded basal membrane to enable active transport of substance out of the duct this will lead to interlobular which is an excretory uh, duct. The excretory duct is lined with a tall columna epithelium. Now you know what is the secretory type and the duct and what is the tissue or epithelium lining each type of duct.
The salivary saliva is secreted by a gland. We have three types of gland. The first one is parotid gland. The type of gland is serous gland. Here is the parotid gland, a serous secretion, a sini. And this section also, it is not only showing the asni, it's also show the duct of the parotid gland. B is a sublingual gland. The majority of the glands here are mucus secretion, secreting. However, submandibular gland, which is represented by figure C, it's a mixed serous and mucous glands. Okay. To summarize, sublingual glands have mainly mucous asina. Parotide have mainly serous asini. However, the submandibular is a mixture of mucous and serous asini. In these two figures the subman uh, the man, uh, sublingual and submandibular we can see that the submandibular is darker than the sublingual because during the preparation of this tissue in the slide Mucus acini stain more weakly than serous acini because of the technique, okay? And we know that the submandibular gland is a mixture of serous and the mucus, okay? However, the sublingual is only mucus. That's why this one appears as uh, mucus uh, looks uh, more weakly. You can see both secretory acne, as I said before, and also the duct of the parotid. These slides show in details the glands. In this figure, it show you the location of the submandibular. To summarize function of saliva or these glands to keep mouth moist and give a protection and lubrication and also secrete an enzymes which including amylase and lysozyme and also contain immunoglobulin A. In addition to numerous small glands situated in the mucous membrane in the lip we call it labial glands in the cheeks blue color gland in the tongue lingual gland palate we call it palatin glands it's the name is depending on its location <clears throat> next week i'm going to go through the other part of gastrointestinal tract and its organ in details focusing on the layers leaning epithelium leaning it's and also the layer which compose or uh, to form the uh, tube of the digestive system
on each part. So, from the SA figures so through the large intestine, it is an tube composed of four concentric layers, which called tonics. From inside to outside of this tube, or from deep to superficial, these tonics or layer, it is mucosa, submucosa. Submucosa contains submucosal nerve plexus. We can call it Misner's plexus. And these two layers is followed by mesicularis, mentric plexus, and the th finally is covered by adventitia or serosa. <clears throat> The esophagus is, as we said, is a tube. The tubular passageway, it's a pharynx to stomach. Its length is about 25 centimeter in adult. We have to focusing on its histology, the mucosa, leaning. The esophagus is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelial. The mucosa, submucosa here in esophagus is thick, <coughs> elastic, fibers, chain, and mucous gland. <coughs> and also, the third layer of the Esophagus tube is mesicularis. It's arranged into two. Layer, the inner one is circular, the outer one is longitudinal. But both are composed of a skeletal and smooth muscle. The final layer of the esophagus is adventitia. It is not that the esophagus is connecting the pharynx and the from uh, superior part, however, the inferior part is connected to the stomach. That's why we can see the superior esophageal sphincter. This sphincter is skeletal muscle, contains skeletal muscle, and it represents the pharynx and esophagus meeting point. Inferior esophageal sphincter, it's a cardiac sphincter, circular, but the type of muscle here is smooth. But in the superior, it was skeletal. And it's a connection between esophagus and stomach. The stomach, in general, can do the main function of digestive system, which including chemical and mechanical digestion, and the histology of the stomach. I will go through it in detail in the next lecture, inshallah. From inside to outside, the mucosa it's composed of simple columnar epithelial tissue and it's containing gastric pits and gastric glands. That's why we can see a chemical digestion here. 
The mesicularis in the stomach is composed of three layers, inner, oplicule, and middle, and outer. The middle is arranged in circular. However, the outer is longitudinal. To summarize our lecture, you have to focus on the definition of each part. If I mention the definition, you have to focus on it. And on the second slide, what is the major group of organs? As I said, elementary canal, accessory organs. Okay. What is the main function of the digestive system? As I said here, the general structure of the digestive system, it's not really complex because it is known that the gastrointestinal tract is starts with the oral cavity and then pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, during these, the passageway, <coughs> the food is, is uh, exposed to the chemical and mechanical digestion in order to break down the food and getting energy or building a block to be absorbed by blood to transfer it to the tissue. As a new, to uh, provide them as a nutrient. Here is the layers of the gastrointestinal tract. It's very important, and I said before, why this structure of these layers is various or different, because uh, in different region because each part can do maybe a main function which is different from others. So it's depending on their function, the layers is various in different region of digestive system. The lip here, as I said before, it is a transitional from the skin to the oral mucosa, which is responsible, which characteristic, which, uh, sorry, give it uh, the main characteristic of lips. Uh, we can see it is a transitional between the oral mucosa and the skin. However, it's lacking salivary gland and sweaty gland that we can find it in the skin. But it is rich with sensory innervation and capillaries, which is responsible for the red color or pink colors of this region. In the tongue, you have to concentrate on the three types of palate fungiform, filiform, and circumvallate. We have also another type of palate, but it is uncommon in human, and I mention it in this slide. What is the differences between filiform and fungiform? Okay. The main characteristic of fungiform, the main characteristic of filiform, and what is the difference between these two type. What is the largest palate in the tongue? We mentioned that the circumvallate palate is uh, in this region are very large. Okay. And what is the structure? We can see it in this section of the tongue. This section will show you the circumvallate papillae, and also you can see the taste bud. <clears throat> uh, 
In the taste bud, we have three types of cells. As I said before, gustatory, supportive, and basal stem cells. Which one is responsible for renewing the uh, gustatory and supportive cells? As I said, it's a basal stem cell. Okay, and this taste bud is responsible or responsible for sending a message to the brain about how something tastes. How these buds can accomplish this function or can do this function? Because taste buds have a very sensitive microscopic hair called microvilli. So all of these things which I mentioned too is important. The structure of teeth, the definition of each one, for example, dentin, from where is derived, from mesenchyme or ectoderm, you have to differentiate because it's mentioned here in the slide. In the magnificent section through a tooth, you can see also the structure here, dentin, predentin, and odentoplast. The components of the saliva that secreted through salivary glands. The component of saliva, as I said, the main component is the water as it uh, make high percentage, it's 99% of saliva. <clears throat> it's also give a protection by containing a lysozyme and this lysozyme is act, uh, uh, sorry, uh, give an antimicrobial activity and give a protection. You can also see the function of the salivary gland and in different way because it's moist in food, cleans oral cavity, and so on. <clears throat> you have to concentrate here on the type of cells which is from the intercalated duct and citrated duct and which is led to interlobular which is also named by excretory ducts. You have to focus on the cells of these the type of salivary glands and the difference between each one and what is the type of secretion. Parotid is a serous, sublingual is mucus secreting, <coughs> submandibula is a mixture between serous and mucus glands. Thank you so much.